Hey Data Factory fans, welcome back to the channel. It's Mark here back with you for another new video. And I'm going to continue on the series of focusing on Microsoft Fabric, especially if you're coming from Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics. That last video that I recorded, I focused on the differences between data pipelines in ADF and in Fabric. Today I want to talk to you about what data flows are that come from ADF and Synapse Analytics and what data flows are when you're in Microsoft Fabric. So let's jump right in. Now what I want to do this time is I want to show you on my screen, if you look at the screen, I'm in Azure Data Factory. And I want to build a very simple uh, data flow, uh, which is known as a mapping data flow inside of Azure Data Factory. And then I'll show you what that would look like if we built that again, this time in Microsoft Fabric Data Flows. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to click up here under Factory Resources and say New Data Flow. Or right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take data from an Azure SQL database that has movies and movie ratings stored in it. Now, what just happened on my screen, um, coincidentally, is that my data flow debug timed out. So within, I'm going to click on the button here just as I'm talking. So what this does, is this initiates a Spark cluster behind the scenes that is managed fully by Microsoft in Azure. It's important because when you're building data flows inside of Azure with Data Factory, the requirement is that you have a Spark environment. Uh, these are all built on top of Spark, so they are scaled out data flows for data transformation that you build visually with the graph that we're going to build, but you need to have a Spark environment. So you need to have that in order to, to uh, be able to interactively uh, debug and then run and preview the data inside of it. So you can still build your data flow uh, without the uh, cluster. You just can't run anything until that cluster is ready. So it comes up in about 10 seconds, which is a great uh, you know enhancement that we made on the service. But let's go ahead and start building now that we have everything set and ready to go. I'm going to click on Add Source, and let's call this, um, we'll call this uh, Movies Source. And we're going to select my Movies Database as the Source Data Set. SQL Movies is my Azure SQL Database. You pull this up, and if you go over to Projection, you can see that inside of my data set, I already defined the columns inside of that table. That's very simple. I can go over to Data Preview and preview that data. Now that I have the cluster running, the data flow debug is green and turned on. Okay, and uh, there's my data. Now, let me not gloss over some of the differences. I want to make sure I point them out that you can see between Azure Data Factory and Fabric Data Factory. Remember, I, I picked a data set that had the definition of my data, the table, and the columns that I'm reading from. Let me open it up and I'll show you. If you click on Open, you'll see that it is reading from my link service which has my connection information. And the table that I picked in the data set is called dbo.movies. And there was a schema that I imported that's associated with that data set. Let's now click on the link service edits. You can also test the connection. And you see that I used my SQL auth in order to connect to my data source. I'll show you how to set that up in Fabric as soon as we're done here in Azure. All right, great. So I've got my source. I saw that my data is there ready to keep building. I don't want all the columns, so I'm going to use the select transformation. And I'm going to call this select columns. And I want to take out the Rotten Tomato. So I'll just go ahead and click the garbage can next to Rotten Tomato. And now I've changed the projection. So if you look at the Inspect tab, you can see that now I only have these five columns instead of the six original columns. Easy enough. Next thing I want to do is I want to build an aggregation. I want to uh, get the average ratings per year. So to do that in Azure Data Flows, I will go over to the aggregates transformation, a schema modifier as is known. And let's call this um, average ratings. All right. And uh, the group by column, I need to group by years because I'm getting the average rating per year. The aggregate I'm using is average. So I can put in the expression here. This is an average. I get a telesense. That's great. I'm averaging the ratings. So I can start typing that. And the editor is telling me that's a mistake because it's actually just rating, like I see here as I click on the input schema. All right, great. So I've got my formula, and let's give this new column a name. Column one doesn't really work for me, so I'm going to call this average ratings per year. All right, uh, now when we preview this, one thing you're going to see is that the value is not always rounded to the same number. It's actually not rounded at all. So let's go ahead and add a derived column next. Derived column lets you change the values of existing columns or add new columns. And so I will call this uh, round um, aggregate. And we'll pick that column that we created, which is average ratings per year. And the expression we're going to use is we're going to use the round function. And we're just going to round that ratings column input schema, average ratings per year. 
All right, uh, last thing is we're going to store this in the lake. Now, the assumption is that if you built these in Azure Data Factory, although we do now have a connector for the Fabric Data Lake, most likely you're not using Fabric Lake House or Data Lake yet. You're probably using Azure Data Lake Store. So let's do that. Let's put this into a Data Lake Store, ADLS Gen 2, just like you probably are doing today. So I have one already set as my ADLS Gen 2 folder, and that's it. I'm going to now get my output file from this aggregation of all the data into there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the data preview to make sure that everything looks right. And sure enough, everything does look good. Although I do realize that I don't like the rounding that I said, I actually want to round it to two places. Let's go back to the round function. This is defaulted, and so I'm going to actually set comma two as the second parameter value there. And we can go ahead and uh, data preview again, just by clicking refresh. And we'll see that we'll have a much better looking rounding, which is going to be more accurate in terms of the average rating per year. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, so let me actually call this, give this transformation name. I'll say output to lake. Okay, so that's it. Now the next step is we're um, within Azure Data Factory, you cannot execute a data flow outside of the pipeline context. So what you need to do is now create a pipeline. So let's go ahead and say new pipeline. Let me give this a meaningful name so I know which one that I can pick from here. And we'll call this average ratings per year, appropriate name. And back on the pipeline, we'll just add that activity, which is a data flow. So this is going to call a data flow and call my activity average ratings data flow and then i will point to that data flow I just created which was average ratings boom there you go and then it's done you go ahead and run and you're good to go let's now do the same thing but with a data flow that's in fabric so i'm going to switch over to microsoft fabric all right so here we are in microsoft fabric and now we're going to do the same thing within a data flow in fabric data factory so i have my my workspace open. So i'm going to shift the screen down just a tad here so that you can see that i'm selected onto the data factory that I'm on the Data Factory app. So this is my persona view, which means that when I click new up here, I will see Dataflow Gen 2. This, this is Dataflows in Microsoft Fabric. So we had a similar experience as well in Azure Data Factory, which was Power Query based Dataflows. And what we've done is we've uh, normed on the Power Query approach for visual transformation inside of Microsoft Fabric Data Factory. And so to achieve the same thing I did with the mapping data flows in Azure Data Factory, I'm going to build a data flow that's known as Gen 2 because the Gen 2 is the next gen, the next version, next rev of the data flows that come from Power BI that we now call a data flows Gen 1. In addition to that, I can write the data out to output. So I'm going to actually write the data out to the lake house and I can scale these out because now they will run on the fabric compute. So they will scale out using fabric compute. Now, the first thing I need to do in order to get that first source, that first tile that I had on my graph inside of Azure Data Factory is to click on import from SQL Server. Remember, I'm connecting into my SQL database. So I'm going to put in the name of my SQL database here. And the database I was using was called M-A-K-A-W. Oops, I cannot type. OK, I already have a connection defined for this. And this is where I put in my credentials. This is the equivalent of a link service from Azure Data Factory when you're in Microsoft Fabric is known as connections. Then click on next. And now I can see the table. So as opposed to defining a separate data set, like we did in ADF, we're not going to define data sets here in Fabric. There's not that concept. There are semantic models coming from the Power BI world. Um, and you can still use those. But here, when you're in the data factory context of Microsoft Fabric, you're not going to use data sets. So instead, point your table right here when you're initiating your connection. And so I was using the movies uh, table which is this one here. And now you'll see the data preview with the schema, just like we saw in ADF, mapping data flows. Okay, everything looks great. Let's go ahead and click create. Okay, so I have both of the graph view up here, which is known down here. If you hover back down here, you'll see this as the diagram view. And then the data view or the data preview view like you had in Azure Data Factory as well. Now, if you recall, the first thing I did was I took out the Rotten Tomato column. So let's go ahead and right click on that and we'll just say remove column. Now, instead of having just the view across the top with the graph like you have in Azure Data Factory, you also have the steps over here on the side. And so I can rename these just like I did for ADF, and you can name them, rename them near the place. I can come up here and I can say rename, and I can call this as movie source, just like I did in ADF, or I can come over here and for the next step, I can, re I can rename remove columns to what I called over there, which was select columns. Alrighty, next step was to aggregate, to get me the average rating per year, which means I need to group the year column first. So I'm gonna right click on the year column 
and I'm going to say group by. Group by year and create the new column. The new column I called was average ratings. And this is an average. And the column that we're using to average is rating. Click OK. And now we'll get a new column here. Now notice I don't need to turn on the debug cluster here. This is already set for you because we're using the, uh, the mashup engine to uh, produce these results for you. I also get the data that's raw without the rounding. So the next thing I want to do is I want to um, right click on there and I'm going to say transform column, rounding, round, and this time I will remember to use the two decimal places previously in EDF. There we go. And let's go ahead and just let's, for the sake of being the same across the two different data factories, let's call these steps the same as I did in, in ADF. So uh, this one was called the um, average, and the next one was, uh, actually, let me go back and see what I called it. I don't remember. I called it round aggregate. Last thing is I need to output this to the lake. So I'm going to click over here on the add data destination. And this time I'll go to the lake house because the idea would be that you're uh, converting your mapping data flows in ADF into uh, fabric artifacts. And so you probably want to write to the right, to the lake house, not the right house, the lake house. Okay, I'm using the lake house in the bug bash, oops, the bug bash workspace. And we'll use the mark lake house. All right, and I'll call this table. Let's call it, um, let's call it movies average ratings. Okay, I have my column mapping now, um, and that all looks fine. This is, I didn't do anything differently in EDF. I just left it as default. All I do is add the sync, and I was good to go, and that's it. Now, um, when you're done with this, I'm going to go ahead and publish this inside of Fabric and click on Publish. Now, the, another key difference in Fabric data flows is that you can execute or what's known as refresh these data flows directly here from the artifact list in your workspace. Um, the other way to sort of do the same thing I did with the pipeline inside of um, Azure Factory is to click on Pipeline. So the data pipeline over here. Let's create a new pipeline, give it a meaningful name. I call the data flow three, so shame on me. But let's go ahead and just let's add that in here. So we're going to have the data flow activity, which is just like it is in Azure to Factory, and we'll pick data flow three, and now you can run, and that's it. So that's a uh, first sort of starter for you on how to build data flows in Microsoft Fabric Data Factory as opposed to data flows that are in Azure to Factory in Synapse Analytics. Thanks for watching.